Hello and welcome to Lesson 41 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at something called a definite integral. Today's lesson is going to be about creating muscle memory. So I'm going to teach you a process that I just want you to practice. I'm going to teach you the definition of the process, what to do in it, and I just want you to practice it. The reason why we're doing it is going to come in the next lesson, in Lesson 42. What it creates for us, what it gives us an answer to, comes in the next lesson. But for now, I just want you to practice the process so you feel fluent at it. So it's going to be like Mr. Miyagi teaching Daniel-san, you know, wax on, wax off. And Daniel-san has no idea why he's doing that, but he's creating muscle memory so that when he needs that process, it's fluent, it's quick, it's easy. Okay, so first thing, what is the formula for a definite integral? What is the definition? A definite integral is defined as this process. So this is new to you. You've seen the symbol for integration, but you haven't seen the little numbers at the top and the bottom of that little symbol. If you see the numbers at the top and the bottom of that symbol, what it means is first thing you do is you integrate the function and then you keep the little numbers at the top and bottom of, an, of a square bracket and then you substitute those two values into the function and you subtract. So integrate first, then substitute and subtract. OK, as easy as one, two, three. So we're going to practice this calculation. So here's the first one. Evaluate the following definite integral. The integral between 2 and 5 of the function 6x squared with respect to x. So, first thing we need to do is integrate and put it inside square brackets. So, 6x squared integrates to 6x cubed divided by 3, which is 2x cubed. So we practice that process of integration. Normally, we would put plus C. I'm not going to. I'm going to explain that at the end, why I don't put plus C. So 2x cubed, then close the square brackets and put 2 and 5 at the top and bottom to remind you that that's what you're going to substitute in. At this point, we now substitute and subtract. We substitute 5 in. So we get two lots of five cubed, and we subtract what we get if we substitute two in. We get two lots of two cubed. So that, that part here is f of five, and this part here is f of two. And so we're doing f of five minus f of two. Then we evaluate that find the value of, and that gives us 234. So 234 is this definite integral. Okay, I'm going to do one more, and then you're going to practice your own. So here's another one. So integral between minus, one, minus 3 and 1 of the function x plus 2 all squared with respect to x. So the first thing we need to do is, before we can integrate this, we actually need to expand the, the bracket squared. So this still becomes the integral between minus 3 and 1, but I'm going to rewrite x plus 2 all squared as what it becomes. x plus 2 all squared is x squared plus 2x plus 2x, so that's plus 4x and plus 4. So I'm going to integrate that with respect to x and then substitute the numbers minus three and one in. So firstly, when I integrate, I put it then into square brackets. So the x squared becomes x cubed divided by three, or a third x cubed. 4x becomes 4x squared divided by two, which is 2x squared. Four becomes 4x. And I integrate that, sorry, and, and I substitute that between minus three and one. So the minus 3 and 1 are the values I'm going to substitute in. So at this point, I now find the value of this function when I substitute 1 in. 
and then I subtract the answer when I substitute minus 3 in. So I get f of 1 take away f of minus 3. So f of 1 is a third of 1 cubed plus 2 lots of 1 squared plus 4 lots of 1. That's f of 1. And then I subtract f of minus 3. So that's a third of minus 3 cubed plus 2 lots of minus 3 squared plus 4 lots of minus 3. With all these negatives, very, very, you've got to be very careful not to make negative errors. Negative errors are the most common type of error at advanced maths level. So make sure you try and cut, cut them out as much as possible by practicing your maths. So when you've got, you're cubing a negative three, you're going to get a negative. When you're squaring a negative three, you're going to get a positive. I mean, times four by minus three, you're going to get a negative. And then you're going to be subtracting all of that. So that's going to reverse the, the sign that you had. This is equal to nine and one third. I don't like nine and one third. It's ugly. It's a mixed number. Much better as 28 thirds. So 28 thirds is the definite integral that we wanted. Okay. So that's the process. We make sure we get it into a form we can integrate and we integrate and then we substitute the two values and subtract. So it's the top value first, we substitute in and then we subtract the answer when we, when we substitute the second value in. Now it's time for you to practice a couple for yourself. So I want you to find the value of these two definite integrals, okay? So I want you to evaluate these two definite integrals. The first one is integrate 4x between the values of 4 and 7 with respect to x. The second one is integrate x minus 2 all squared between the values of minus 5 and 1 with respect to x. So pause, write down the maths, have a go, see if you can get it right, and I will go through the answer. So the first one. So integrate first. 4x integrates to 4x squared over 2, which is 2x squared. And you're substituting 4 and 7 in. So firstly, you substitute 7 in, you get 2 lots of 7 squared. And then you subtract what you get when you substitute 4 in, so 2 lots of 4 squared. And when you find those, that's 98 minus 32, which is 66. So the first definite integral, 66. Well done if you got that right. The second one, it's not in a form you can integrate yet. So let's expand. So firstly, we expand it to become x squared minus 4x plus 4. So we integrate that with respect to x. So in the square brackets, we get a third x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x. And then we substitute in 1. When we substitute 1 in, we get a third of 1 cubed minus 2 lots of 1 squared plus 4 lots of 1, okay, which becomes 7 thirds. And then when we substitute minus 5 in, we get a third of minus 5 cubed minus two lots of minus five squared plus four lots of minus five, which is negative 335 thirds. And when I do seven thirds, take away negative 335 thirds, I get exactly 114. So my definite integral here is 114. So that is definite integration. If you've got a fancy calculator, it can do this definite integration for you, okay? But you still need to know the, the process because it won't be able to do it if there is um, constants. For example, if it asks you to do the answer in terms of A and instead of a two there, it gives you the letter A, your calculator won't be able to do that. So in the exam, they're more likely to give you a little bit more algebra to do to, to avoid you using your calculator, but you can you can use your calculator to check if it gives you a value which is a numerical one. And the calculator button that does that is the button that looks like an integral sign with a number with a blank 
at the bottom, a blank at the top for the two values you integrate between, and then a blank to fill in with the, with the function. So it's the button that looks something like that, which some calculators will have. Okay, so like the, the Casio FX991EX class whiz calculator can do that and some other more powerful ones. So now, why didn't I put a plus C? Okay, so why didn't I put a plus C when I was doing my definite integration? The reason is this, let's, let's actually put the plus C in. If I integrate this between two and five, the integral of 8x is 8x squared divided by 2, which is 4x squared, plus c. So if I put plus c in there, and now I substitute 5 in, I'm going to get 4 lots of 5 squared plus c, and then I'm going to subtract what I get when I substitute 2 in, 4 lots of 2 squared plus c. When I evaluate each of those brackets, 4 lots of 5 squared is 100 plus c. And 4 lots of 2 squared is 16 plus c. And when I subtract 100 plus c, take away 16 plus c, I just get 84. The c's cancel each other out. I will always get c take away c if I include the plus c in, in, this, in, in this calculation. So when doing definite integrals, we don't need to include the plus C. You can if you want, it's just a waste of ink. Okay, so that's the reason why we don't have plus C. So what you should do now is continue making this part of your muscle memory. So a skill that you can do without too much thought. And in the next lesson, in lesson 42, I'm going to explain what it actually gives us and why. So right now, practice finding definite integrals with exercise 15.2. Okay, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Enjoy.